this entitled customer has made a seemingly reasonable request of this IT company to remove one of their cars from her property. But when this tech support does some investigating, they realize there is more to this story than meets the eye. And they've now got a little surprise for this lying, angry customer. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, and on with the revamped show. The players in this story are me, an IT help phone monkey, give out tech support but don't go to physically visit users, calls that can't be solved remotely get passed to our device support team, my husband Mike, device support engineer in the same company I work for, which incidentally is the NHS, National Health Service and Angry Lady, aka Angry Lady. Our story begins on a quiet weekday morning. The phone rings and I tingle in anticipation at the thought of helping another friendly customer. Good morning, NHS IT help desk. How can I help today? You can get this car moved from outside my house. I'm sorry, how did you get this number? This is an IT service desk, not a company related to cars. There is a sign in the car and it says if I have any questions about the vehicle to call this number. It is parked in front of my house on my private property and I want it moved now. Important to note, all device support engineers are required to display an NHS parking pass on their car's dashboard that tells people they work for IT in the NHS and has the help desk number on it. The reason for this is that most hospitals charge to park in now and this prevents the engineer getting ticketed, mostly. I start to think this is a little weird as engineers are not allowed to make home visits to staff that need support. They have to meet at their closest NHS building because network. Okay, no problem, sorry about that. If I could take the car's registration and find out what's going on. Angry Lady gives me the car registration. About three letters in, I realize this is my husband's car. Okay ma'am, just to confirm, can you please advise the make and model of the car? She does so. It's definitely ours. Great, thanks. And can I please take your address so that I can advise the engineer in question? She gives the address. She is our next door neighbor, complaining that we have parked outside her house on a terraced street where there is no allocated parking and everyone parks wherever they like or can, whenever there is a space. I take a contact number and promise to phone her back with an update. I call husband who confirms that when he got home from work last night, there were no other spaces on the road. He is not blocking her in, she does not have a driveway, and our road is not permit parking, meaning any member of the public can park there, and there are no restrictions, save some double yellows at junctions. I check with business support manager, asking how she wants me to handle a member of the public, angry about a car parked by her house that happens to be driven by someone who works for the NHS. She tells me to go to town and do what I like. Excellent. While having this conversation, Angry Lady phones back and shouts at my colleague so loudly I can hear it through his headset. I ask him to transfer the call to me. Good morning, I was just about to call you back. About time, when is this car getting moved from my property? Well, actually, I've spoken to the engineer in question, who advised he lives on that road, so he would be entitled to park there. It's outside my house on my property. It has to be moved now. I'm very sorry this is causing you frustration. As I've explained to you, the vehicle is parked on public land by a resident of that street. You have phoned an IT desk for the NHS and as your call is not IT related, I need to end it so that I can free up the line, so that I may support doctors and nurses who are trying to treat patients. I hang up on the angry lady. I would like to say the story ends there, but she calls back and shouts at four more people. So in light of this, I contact the council, give them the address, and ask them to please confirm if the resident of any property is entitled to park outside that property and demand others move their cars. They email me back confirming it is a public street anyone can park there, nobody is entitled to park outside their house, and as long as no driveways are being blocked, nobody can be asked to move their car. I print the email. When I get home, I post this email through her door. Husband's car was still there. If the car wasn't actually blocking her for anything, I'm trying to work out what her actual problem was. Did she just not like the idea that somebody would park in front of her house, thinking that she's the only one who's allowed to do that? And she's a liar too, because she's like, this car's parked on my private property, as if it's somehow driven up onto her yard. It's literally on the road, which is public space. Isn't it nice to know that there are people out there just wasting everybody's time, including those trying to help nurses and doctors? Just wonderful. This happened way back in 2008. English is not my primary language, so apologies in advance. 
I was at mandatory military service as an ordinary private, but my talent in understanding computer related stuff got me some desk job, and me the military soldier quickly turned out to me the tech support service soldier in service of the ranked officers. I was actually doing computer and other technical maintenance stuff at the base, until that one day I had the most extreme tech support I ever gave. It was around 2300, and I was in bed, ready to sleep, I don't know, reading maybe? I got called to the HQ by one of the ranked officers. I got told to dress civil clothing. At this hour? Okay. I said and went. There was this high ranked officer in his personal car. Get in, he said. I have no internet at home. Wow. So we drove like 20 minutes to his flat in a two building complex. Each got 12 floors important. His was the fifth floor. We got into his house. He showed me his computer. No ethernet connection. Show me the modem, I said, thinking this should be easy. Bad or disconnected cable. He pointed at one other building, seventh floor. What? There it is. How? Why? That guy pays and we share. Oh, you mean both of you? No, it was in we two buildings. So yes, that guy pays for an eight megabit ADSL connection and shares the connection to two entire 12 floored buildings. I asked, how did you connect? He said, there's a cable on the roof. Naturally, I said, let's check the other guy's modem because there is no way I'm going to the roof. Forgetting that I'm a soldier and technically I'm under order. So the officer told me I should check the roof first and that's an order. So we went up to 12th floor only to find the trap door locked with a huge padlock. The officer said the guy who has the key is on vacation. I thought, okay, great, this adventure is over. But no, he phoned his foot soldier to find a cutter and bust the padlock with a cutter. Please keep in mind that it's about midnight now. After 20 something minutes, the padlock is cut and roof door opens. I went up to the roof, found the ethernet cable, which comes from the other building, followed it and reached to a network switch covered in pigeon poo. It's cover plastic melted and obviously not working. I took the switch from the poo pile, got down the ladder, showed him this is the problem and the officer called some guy again. It's probably 1 a.m. now. Gives the phone to me and I ordered a switch at this hour. And yes, it was delivered by car. And yes, I installed it, got the internet working and his foot soldier drove me back to base. An 8 megabit connection for two buildings with 12 floors? I'm just trying to work out how on earth any of them have usable internet at any point in time. What can they do? Like check emails and that's about it? I mean, I know they said it was 2008, but YouTube was around in 2008. It sounds like this guy was just on a bit of a power trip. I mean, it's the middle of the night. They go into his personal car to the place where he personally lives to fix his personal internet connection. Well, if you can call it a personal internet connection. Like he really he couldn't wait till morning, he had to disturb his sleep just to fix his incredibly dodgy internet setup. You know you need a new internet plan when the cause of disconnection is pigeon poo. I've been working tech support for about a year and a half now, but already have stories. I work for a company that mainly does remote support for elderly people, so we get some weird, kind of annoying complaints and questions. And as a little bit of backstory or info, the connection software we install when our customer first signs up with us tells us if the computer is on and connected to the internet and such. One day I get a help ticket saying something along the lines of, I can't get on the internet, which when you were doing remote support by phone is the last thing you want to hear. I sigh and look her up in our system. Oddly enough, our system shows that she's online. Okay. I give her a call and this is how the conversation went. Hi, is this... We will call her Betty. Yes, who is this? This is me from such and such company. I understand that you're having a problem with the internet. Is that right? Yes. Are you connected to my computer yet? Yes, I can see your desktop. See, it doesn't work. At this point, neither of us has clicked on anything. Um, this is your desktop, not the internet. Yeah, and it's not working. Me at this point, very confused. Betty, if you want to open the internet, you have to click on this right here that says internet browser name. I then opened up the browser to its given homepage. See, it doesn't work. Actually, it is working. Do you see here where it says search? Yeah. Well, type in what you're looking for. What? I never had to do that before. How did you used to get on things like your email or Facebook? It would just be there. 
you would just turn on your computer and whatever website you were looking for would just be there? Yes! I will skip a portion of the conversation where I determined she is not talking about bookmarks or anything like that. Betty, that's not how the internet works. Look, let's try your email. Click right here and type insert email service.com and then hit enter. She types it in and it immediately pulls up her email because she is already logged in. See, it doesn't work. Betty, this is your email. This is what your email has always looked like. I know this is what her email has always looked like because I had helped her into it several times in the past when she had forgotten her password. Let's try opening one of your emails. Click on this one. She clicks on it and again, see, it is not working. Okay, Betty, I'm not really sure why it's not working. Maybe your computer just needs a rest and it'll go back to normal in a couple of days. Sometimes updates cause problems, but they fix themselves. Really? So if I leave it alone, you think it'll go back to normal? Yep, just give it a couple of days. And if it doesn't go back to normal, give us a call. Oh, okay. Thank you for helping me. You're welcome, Betty. Have a nice day. You too. Click. Never heard back from her about it not working, but one of my co-workers did help her into her email about a month later because she forgot the password again. No problems with it not working. Whenever I think back to this phone call, I always have this WTF moment, like, what wasn't working? Why do I have this gut feeling that her monitor just wasn't turned on? Maybe she's just blindly trusting him typing in stuff, but just the whole time the screen is blank, it's like, nothing's happening. One of my developers got a new desk phone extension like a month ago. We expect to get a couple of calls a week from people asking for help or explanations regarding our applications. Since the new extension went in, he's been getting calls three or four times a day with the person who previously had it. Without further explanation, the funniest exchange thus far. Hi, I'm calling for such and such Johnson. I need to speak with him, it's urgent. Sorry, but this is a new extension for me. You should check the directory or get the operator to connect you to his extension. That's fine, just get him on the phone. Excuse me? Look, I know his extension, I know he's there. Get him on your phone. Dev looks at me completely confused, then hands me the phone. This is Dev's manager. Is there something you need from Dev? I know this is such and such Johnson's phone. I don't give a frick who you are. Get him on your phone right now or I'll make sure you don't have a job in the morning. Oh, such and such. Yeah, he hasn't worked here in two months since he got caught stealing laptops. Caller immediately hangs up. I dialed the number back and got a not valid response. I wish we had those phones recorded because I'm 99% sure that was one of the dudes he was selling equipment to. <laughs> Yikes. You just see that immediate shift and dread as they go from demanding to speak to Johnson, the guy stealing laptops for him so he can put in the black market, to being like, oh crap, I might go to jail. I better hang up. This is a story from a couple of years ago when I used to provide IT support to medium-sized businesses. Part of my job was to set up new workstations and make sure they are connected to the network and that the phones were working and that everything works basically. One day, a new client put an order through for 20 laptops with docking stations, mice and keyboards, and 40 monitors. But when we arrived to set them up, in the story is me, the one and only, SM, section manager, on the side of the client, SP, section supervisor, on the side of the client, R, receptionist, and MM, my manager. We arrived at the client early in the morning at 7 a.m. All the desks were meant to be cleared of personal belongings, and staff were meant to back up data onto a dedicated network share. The department manager sent an email copying my team in and all 20 staff members with the date and time we were arriving. We booked a parking space for our van two weeks prior to our visit. The parking space was right next to the entrance. We arrived at the company and couldn't find the parking bay that we requested. Whilst my colleague waited in the car, I went to ask reception. Hi, we're here from company name and we're here to see SM. We booked this parking space but can't seem to find it. Okay, let me have a look. I can't find you on my system for this bay. That's strange. Here's the email confirmation. Oh no, that can't be right. This space is for vans only. But we are a van. We are delivering and setting up loads of IT equipment for SM. Oh no, that parking space is not for IT. It's for important things like the shop and cafe on the first floor. Excuse me? Look, I don't mean to be rude, but we're here to do a job. Allow me to call SM. Puts the phone down. 
It turns out that we do have a parking space for you, but it was moved to this space. SM is on her way down to meet you. Great, thanks. I'll just tell my colleague the parking number. Hi, welcome to company name. Do you have many things to carry? Hi, yes, we got all the requested monitors, laptops, docks, mice, and keyboards you ordered, as well as the cabling. SM directs me to the stairs. Right, we're based on the 19th floor. Blimey, where are your lifts? Visitor lifts open at 9 a.m. Pardon? Do you have staff lifts? Yes, but you're not staff and we're not insured to carry visitors in those lifts. We are not walking up all those stairs. Hmm. Okay, let me ask security. Okay, you're allowed to use the lifts. Follow me. Thank goodness. We got up to the 19th floor and we were shown the desks, none of which were cleaned. They were extremely dirty with rotten leftover food and it stank. None of the staff members backed up their data either. SP met us by the lift. Right, this is SP. She will be taking care of you today. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, yes, very good. Follow me, this is the desk you'll be cleaning. There's some rubbish bags in the cupboard just here. Make sure you split the rubbish up for recycling. All the old computers are to be loaded into my van at this parking space. All staff members have left me their log in details on this piece of paper for you to transfer the data. Looks in bag for piece of paper. Oh dear me, I must have left it in the cafe on the table. Let me just go down and get it. Guess what parking space it was? The one we booked. You made your staff write down their log on details on the piece of paper and left it on the table in the cafe? These people must change their passwords now. That's extremely dangerous, especially since you left it unattended. You don't ask people to write down their log in details. Don't be so rude. Excuse me? We are an IT company. We were promised that all this will be done before we got here. Whilst SP went down to get the login details, I decided to take some photos and send them to my manager. I then gave him a call. Hi, we're at this company name job. I explained what has happened. You're joking, right? I just seen the photos you sent. No, I'm not having two of my workers putting their health and safety at risk. Go back to base and explain that you can't do the job due to health and safety reasons and tell SM to check her emails. Explain that we still have to charge the call out fee. When SP got back, we asked to speak with SM. What do you think you're doing standing around chatting? Get to work now! Can I speak to SM please? Not until you finish your work. It's important. Okay, okay, I'll get her down for you. I'm sorry, but after seeing the circumstances, my manager has cancelled this appointment to a time when you're prepared. He asked me to tell you to check your email and that he is still charging you for the call out. This is ridiculous. We even paid for the bin bags for you to take the rubbish out. Is that cost being refunded? Trust me, you two will be out of a job today and I will make sure you never get another job ever again if you don't finish this now. You know what? I'm gonna call this stupid of a manager and he will lose his job too. I will take your company down, you wait for tomorrow's newspapers. We got escorted out by security. We went back to base to witness an argument over the phone. It turned out that SM had a massive go at my manager over the phone and he terminated the IT support contract. Two days later, we were called to a meeting with SM's lawyer, but after my manager showed the photos as well as the conversation he recorded, the lawyer phoned up the client to say that he doesn't deal with clients like that and left the case. Must not have been paid. Two weeks later, and courtesy of my manager, the client has undergone a health and safety inspection, which it failed. But the company was never given the chance to improve, as two months later, it went bust. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.